Hi, Dave Williams here again. And in this video, I wanna show you how to design a counter using D flip-flops. The particular counter that I want to design is just is going to count in this sequence. It's going to go one, to two, to three, to four, to five, and then back to one. I'm going to add a twist to it though I'm also going to add the ability to control the direction so I can count from one to five to four to three to two and then back to one. So I can either count up or I can count down. There are five total states, one, two, three, four, and five states. So that means I am going to need three bits to represent all of these states. And those three bits are going to be the outputs of these flip-flops here, Q0, Q1, and Q2. So the number there is going to be created by the number Q2, Q1, Q0. And what I'm going to do in this design is figure out what needs to go into each one of these logic blocks. The middle one and the last one here. So logic block for Q0, Q1, and for determining Q0, Q2. What I'm actually missing from these logic blocks, I'm, I'm going to be transitioning from state to state, so I need to know what the previous state was. So I need to know the Q0, Q1, and Q2 values for the logic block. But I'm also going to need to have another bit that determines which direction I'm counting in. And I'm going to call this the UDN bit. So each one of these logic blocks will require four inputs, not just the three to represent the value. We need this fourth bit to represent whether I'm counting up or counting down. So I'm going around in this in the sequence on the outside if my UDN bit is equal to one and I will count down if my UDN bit is equal to zero. A couple things that I'm missing from the state machine. Because I have three bits, I can actually represent eight different things, and I only have five states in my state, in my state machine. So there's three states that are missing. Those states are zero, six, and seven. So if I'm in, in that state, zero, six, and seven, if I am counting down, I'm going to want to transition to five. And if I'm counting up, I'm going to want to transition to zero. So the first thing I want to do once I've, I've defined my state transitions is to create a table showing the current to next transition. So all my current states are 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 1. And then I need to figure out for each one of these current states what my next state is. But there's actually one more piece of information that I need to add, and that is what the value of the up-down bit is. So let's start off setting the up-down bit to 1 for all 8 of these states. And when up-down is 1, then I'm counting upwards. And according to this state transition diagram, my next states look like this. <laughs> Remember that if I'm at 5, I want to go to 1. And if I'm in these states that aren't in the regular sequence, 6 and 7, then I also want to go to 1. Now I want to look at all of the current states for when up, down is 0. When up, down is 0, then I count down. From 0, I want to go to 5. So that completes the state transition table. The next thing I want to do is figure out what values I'm going to need for my flip-flops to accommodate each one of these state transitions. I have three inputs, D2, D1, and D0. D2 controls Q2, D1 controls Q1, and D0 controls Q0. And D flip-flops are incredibly simple. Whatever value is applied here at D will get passed through to Q on the rising edge of the clock. And what that does is it makes it very easy to fill in the D flip-flop part of the table. In order to make Q2 transition to the appropriate values as given in this column here, all I need to do is apply that D2 value in. So the Q2 column here is just going to be copied over to D2. <laughs> Same thing applies for D1. Whatever gets applied at D1 is going to pass through to Q1. So in order to get this next state of Q1, 
I just have to have a copy of Q1 over here in my D1 column. And finally, D0 will just be a copy of Q0. And now I finish the state transition tables as well as the table to show what value I need at each of the at the input of each of my D flip flops to implement the state transition table. So I've simplified the state transition table a little bit and turned it into more of a truth table. Remember, what I'm trying to do is figure out what the inputs to this D is going to be based on what's in this truth table. The inputs to that logic that's going into D will be the Q2, Q1, and Q0 values, the current values of them, as well as the up-down control signal. And I will have three outputs, D2, so that will be what's going into one of the one D flip-flop. I'll have a D1 that's going into another D flip-flop, and a D0 that's going into another D flip-flop. Three flip-flops in total, three blocks of logic that I need to design. So I need to translate this truth table into the Carnot map. So I'm just looking at this column for D2. And one thing you should pay attention to is the rows in my truth table don't match up to the standard placement of the cells in the Carnot map. For example, 0, 0, 0, 0 cell is actually in this row right here. So the value there would be a 1. 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 cell is the first row up here. So D2 will be a 0 there. 0, 0, 1, 1 is this row right here, D2 will be a zero there, and so on. Now that I've got the Carnot map created, I can form groups of ones to try to, to come up with the simplest expression I can for D2. Now you'll note that in, in this D2 Carnot map, I have no X's. So there's actually turns out that I don't have very large groups that I can create. I can make a group of two here with this one and this one. That would be one group of two. I can make a group of one right there. I can make a group of one here. I can make a group of two with this one and this one. Combine those two together. And finally, I can make a group of two right here. And so what I end up with is, actually that expression is for that grouping, for this grouping, that expression, for this grouping here, I get that expression, for this grouping here, I get that expression, and finally for that group of one right there, I get that expression. Then I can combine all one, two, three, four, five of these product expressions by summing them all together, and I get this expression for D2. Next, I will repeat the process for D1. So I'm using this column here to fill in the table, pay attention to the current values. The current value rows don't correspond to the standard cells in, in the Carnot map. So 0, 0, 0, 1, which would be this cell right there, D1 has a value of 0. 1110, which would be this cell right here, has a value of 0. And I'll carry on filling in all of the values for the Carnot map. Next, I'll group all of the ones. Each one of these ones can only be put into a group of 1. So what I will end up with is 1, 2, 3, 4 product expressions, each one of those product expressions with four terms in it all ORed together. And that expression looks like this. Lastly, I need to analyze D0 using this column of the truth table, fill in the Carnot map, and then come up with an expression for D0. D0 is a little bit nicer than the, than the other D values because I can make larger groups. I can make a nice big group of 8 here. I can make a group of 4 here. I can also make a group of 4 here to get the one on the right there. And finally, I can make a group of 2 with that block and that block. Put those together. Each one of these groups has an expression, so the group at the top here will be 
not Q2, not Q1, not up down. This group of four will be Q2, Q1. This group of four right there will be Q2, up, down. And this group of eight will be not Q0. Combining those four product terms together in one or expression gives me an expression for D0 that looks like this. Finally, putting it all together, we will have a circuit that looks something like this with the logic blocks defined as containing an expression that looks like this for D2. And then D1 is here, so what's inside there will look like this. And then D0 is here, and what's inside that logic block looks like this. One thing that you'll notice I have on the logic blocks is four inputs, Q0, Q1, Q2, and the up-down bit. And that's the same for all four blocks. The difference between the blocks is the logic that's inside of this. And this circuit here will create the up-down counter that counts from 1 up to 5 or from 5 down to 1. So I hope you learned a little bit in this video, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.